Hello, everyone, and welcome to the October 2022 Patch Report. I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at the ZDI and our Chief Patch Wrangler. We've got a lot to talk about this month for Adobe and Microsoft patches, so let's get straight at it. And really, let's begin with what everyone's probably going to be talking about the most, which is what isn't here. There's not an exchange patch. There's not uh, exchange patches for the bugs that are currently under active exploit. Give you a little backstory on this too. Uh, the ZDI in early September purchased these bugs out of a group uh, from Vietnam and we reported them to Microsoft. After that occurred, they were then detected in the wild being used. Microsoft put out some guidance for it and then they re-released their guidance and then they re-released -re their guidance. So there's definitely been some confusion around uh, the mitigating factors. I would look for an out of band release for this in the near future, which means a not patch Tuesday release. Those are relatively rare, but they do happen, especially for things like active attacks. So look out for that. Also, if you haven't applied the September 21 cumulative update, make sure you do that because that add, adds on an exploit mitigation service within exchange. So hopefully uh, that can give you some mitigations while the actual patches are being worked on and uh, just hang on and hopefully we'll get there before too long. But now let's talk about what actually is patched. And we'll start with Adobe. They had a very re light release this month. They only had four patches addressing 29 vulnerabilities in Acrobat, Cold Fusion, Commerce, and Adobe Dimension. So probably the most severe of these is gonna be in Cold Fusion. If you're still using this, that seems to be uh, a pretty severe one. It's got several CVSS 9.8 code execution bugs being addressed. And what's interesting with this one too, is there's a bug in the admin component service uh, it's a it's a hard coded credential. Believe it or not, it, it, there's a hard coded credential there that will allow you to bypass authentication. Hard to believe it's existed this long and uh, not been exploited. Also note that the commerce bug is a CVSS 10, so yikes on that one too. Uh, but it's just a stored cross-site scripting, so take care of that. Acrobat and Reader, of course, get their fixes, but uh, it's pretty standard. None of these bugs are listed as public or under active attack, and Adobe gives them a priority of three. Now, moving on to the Microsoft patches, we have 85 new CVEs being addressed today and quite a few different components. <clears throat> We've already said that uh, you know, the exchange bug is not there, but what is there, which is pretty interesting, is this Complus Event System Service Elevation of Privilege vulnerability. And it's interesting because it's also being used in active attacks. Now, Microsoft, of course, doesn't say how broadly these attacks may be or what it's paired with, but these types of EOP bugs typically get paired with a code execution bug, and then they get used in malware, that sort of thing, to take over uh, a system. And, and we know, even though it is Cybersecurity Awareness Month, people click everything, so definitely get this one out quickly. There's also a couple very interesting bugs from ZDI Senior Vulnerability Researcher Simon Zuckerbron, who is just really, really a great researcher, and these are bugs in CSRSS. <clears throat> Now, what's interesting in these bugs is that one of them is actually a failed patch for a previous bug that had been seen in the wild. So with that, uh, he's looking at some very interesting things in CSRSS that could take uh, a little bit of leeway when it's accepting input from untrusted processes. So uh, look for more information about this in the near future, especially when these patches have given a little bit of time to roll out. There's some really, really cool research Simon is doing, and I can't wait to see it in more detail. Up next, we actually have a CVSS 10 bug in the Arc-enabled Kubernetes cluster. Uh, a lot of people are using containers, of course, uh, and this this one, it, it seems like you'd need a little bit more. I mean, I don't personally know how easy it is to get the randomly generated DNS endpoint for an Arc-enabled Kubernetes cluster, but you need that. You need that first. So. That CVSS 10 though really makes me worried about it. If this is something that you're using, definitely make sure that you either have auto upgrade enabled or you go in and look at manually how you are updating through the Azure CLI. Uh, finally, one of the other big bugs I wanna point out here also came through the ZDI program and that's a Microsoft Remote Code Execution vulnerability that's rated critical. Now, normally office bugs are related at, rated at important because it takes some user interaction to open a dock or whatever that knocks it down, unless the preview pane is an attack vector. However, Microsoft says that 
the preview pane is not an attack vector here, but it's still rated critical. So I'm not exactly sure what that means. Uh, likely it means that you open an office dock and you don't get any warnings. Uh, there's no warning dialog or anything else that the code, that the memory corruption is happening. So it's a, it's a use after free bug. Um, definitely take a look at that and, and kind of make sure that you're updating your office and keeping that good to go. It's actually one of several office bugs that are rated critical. Uh, another interesting bug I want to call out real quickly is this critical rated SharePoint bug. Not that I think it's that astonishing. In fact, we've seen SharePoint bugs like this quite a bit. However, the write-up for this one is identical to the important rated SharePoint bugs. So what's the difference between this one and the important ones? I, I don't know. You'll have to ask someone smarter than me. Uh, we also have quite a few point-to-point -point tunneling protocol remote code execution bugs. So if you're still using PPTP, stop um, and update to something new and at, at the very least patch. You can see the other patches in, in through here. There's quite a few, a uh, whole lot of EOPs this month, a lot of elevation privilege. Most of them are gonna be like these kernel bugs where you log on to a system and then you run some specially crafted code and then you execute at system level or some other higher level. Moving through, we've got 11 Chromium bugs that are being integrated into Edge Chromium this month. Uh, those came, came out a little bit earlier this month. None are listed as under active attack. Uh, looking at the remaining stuff, there's not anything that's really spectacular. Uh, like I said, 39 bugs in elevation of privilege cases. Uh, there is one thing that I, I want to note because it was it's so odd to me. There's a fix for a Visual Studio code and, and the, the workaround is kind of interesting. It, it tells you to create this specific folder and configure it writable only to the current user. Okay. Uh, that, uh, all right. Yeah, let's, let's go with that. Uh, there's also a sandbox escape in LSA that's pretty nifty. Information disclosure bugs. Most of them are, again, dumping random memory. The uh, the only one that's really interesting to me is the the one in Web Account Manager, which could be uh, used to get some tokens from the cloud, use it on a different cloud. Security feature bypass bugs. We only have a couple of them. One is interesting because it requires uh, physical access. So if you're using group policy to uh, disable USB access, but your USB controller is old, group policy may fail silently and you would still be able to insert that USB storage device. Kind of interesting. Um, eight different DOS bugs getting patches. Most interesting one here obviously is gonna be TCP IP. So if you can shut down TCP IP on a target, that's obviously pretty useful. Pretty nice little DOS there. Uh, however, it says, you know, only systems with IPv6 enabled. Great. Uh, which systems ship with IPv6 enabled by default these days? Well, that's right, most of them. So definitely don't miss that. Uh, there's also uh, some spoofing bugs. And one of the spoofing bugs is really interesting. It's in the crypto API. And this could allow an attacker to spoof a public X.509 certificate. And then they would be able to like authenticate or sign code as though they were that original certificate. And this is really important because signed malware gets executed a lot more than unsigned malware. So if you get a piece of something that looks like it's signed by someone you uh, trust, a certificate authority that you would therefore trust, it, you know, but again, people click on everything. So what do I know? No new advisories this month, obviously the update to the servicing stack, and that's about it. So please take a look at all of the stuff. Again, uh, I'll leave links to the blog. And hey, I also wanna point out, uh, Kevin Beaumont had listed another reference for some great exchange information. And I'll put a link down to that in the, in the show notes below. So definitely check that out. So thanks again for sticking with me through a, another month. Uh, obviously we'll be back next month. November 8th is Patch Tuesday. And we'll be back for all of the latest in Adobe and Microsoft updates. And it's possible that we'll have a little special edition. If the exchange patches come out between then, you'll see us back for then and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. And I'll bring on some of our researchers who are uh, doing some exchange research and doing some great stuff for even more details. So again, thanks for watching. This has been the Patch Report. May all your reboots be smooth and clean.